Mathematics is one subject that pervades life at any age and in any circumstance. Thus, its value goes beyond the classroom and the school. Mathematics is a school subject, therefore must be learned comprehensively and with much depth. To succeed in teaching mathematics, teachers need to enhance their understanding of the students' learning abilities, experiences, reasoning, and logical abilities. Learning theories and teaching methods, on the other hand, have been used in different educational systems around the world. Teaching methods involve the use of learning theories, and each theory has different outcomes in mathematics education. As experienced teachers, we believe that all teachers operate according to theories. Our practice is driven by our theories about what will work for our students. Some of these theories are explicit and are learned in school. Some are implicit and are the products of years of experience in schools as teachers, parents, and students. The conceptual framework of mathematics education in the Philippines is supported by the following underlying learning principles and theories. One, we have experiential and situated learning, constructivism, cooperative learning, and discovery and inquiry-based learning. However, in our presentation later on, we've added the cognitivism. So, the mathematics curriculum is grounded on these theories. Now, let's go to the learning theories. Number one, we have here cognitivism. Piaget, one of the cognitive theorists, promoted the concept that the mind has an important role in learning and so to focus on what happens in between the occurrence of environmental stimulus and student response. As a reaction, Benjamin Bloom created a taxonomy for cognitive skills and the six stages are further elaborated and revised in a study by Anderson and Crothwell as remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Cognitivism can be applied by teachers through memorization of basic facts and fundamental formulas in measurement, conversion, and geometry. The use of window cards for speed and accuracy in the four basic facts and helping students find different solutions and formulas to solve the problem. Other key concepts and skills involving numbers and number sense, whole numbers, number theory, fractions, decimals, ratio and proportion, percent, and integers are some of the topics in elementary mathematics wherein cognitivism can be applied. Let's go to constructivism. Constructivism is the theory that argues that knowledge is constructed when the learner can draw ideas from his or her own experiences and connect them to new ideas. John Dewey is often cited as the philosophical founder of this approach. Bruner and Piaget are considered the chief theorists among cognitive constructivists while Vygotsky is the major theorist among the social constructivists. The constructivist theory is a learner-centered approach that emphasizes the importance of individuals actively constructing their knowledge and understanding through the guidance of their teacher. Constructivism emphasizes the importance of knowledge, beliefs, and skills in an individual brings to the experience of learning. It recognizes the construction of new understanding as a combination of prior learning, new information, and readiness to learn. Individuals make choices about what new ideas to accept and how to fit them into their established views of the world. The class uses raw data, primary sources, manipulatives, physical and interactive materials. Constructivism implies that learners are born with innate ability to deal with small integers such as 0, 1, 2, 
3, 4, and so on, and to make comparative estimates of larger numbers. Teachers aid the students when it comes to their own understanding, and instead of telling, the teacher begins asking. Teacher's role can be a mentor, a consultant, and a coach, and challenge the student by making them effective critical thinkers. Also, constructivist teacher challenges students to reach beyond the simple factual response, connect and summarize concepts by analyzing, predicting, justifying, and defending their ideas. Constructivist teachers teach math using CPA approach, concrete which includes using real objects or manipulatives, pictorial which includes pictures and illustrations, and abstract which includes symbols and variables. The use of self-assessment is an important reflection tool for students to manage what they learned, their progress and the goals they would like to have for work they would have to do in the future. Constructivists reduce the load of algorithms in the classroom. It is not about the number of items solved by the learners, but how depth the learning is the focus, its quality over than quantity. Also, practical simulations using pupils and or materials to describe or represent mathematical knowledge or processes. The constructivist approach involves students in real-world possibilities. Numbers and number sense, which includes whole numbers, number theory, fractions, decimals, ratio and proportion, percent and integers. Measurement, which includes the time, speed, perimeter, circumference and area of plane figures, volume and uh, surface area of solid figures, temperature and meter reading and statistics and probability are some of the topics in elementary mathematics where constructivism can be applied. Moving on to discovery learning, Bruner as the lead proponent points to learning that occurs once students are required to find out something by themselves. Discovery learning and inquiry-based learning support the idea that students learn when they make use of personal experiences to discover facts, relationships, and concepts. Learners acknowledge the challenge of realizing something for themselves rather than requiring the teacher to provide for them answers. Some of the topics in elementary mathematics where discovery learning can be applied include finding the circumference of circle and area of plane figures, volume and surface area of solid or space figures, and repeating patterns and simple experiment and experimental probability in statistics. Another theory that can be associated with teaching elementary mathematics is the Situated Learning Theory by Jean Leib and Etienne Wenger. Situated learning is an instructional approach developed by Jean Leib and Etienne Wenger in the early 1990s and follows the work of Dewey, Vygotsky, and others who claim that students are more inclined to learn by actively participating in the learning experience. Learning best occur in an authentic situation or learning context. Learning for them takes place in social situations with other people. In teaching mathematics, since not all schools can let the learners conduct classes in actual places or areas like stores, for example, in teaching basic math facts like additions and multiplication, and kitchens, for example, in teaching them the knowledge and measurement, teachers should create learning space for learners to act as if they are in the actual scenario. It is also important to consider the accessibility of this context to the learners, their needs, what they want to learn, as to provide them with a more meaningful learning experience. Here are the topics in elementary mathematics where situated learning can be applied. Basic mathematical operations involving money, standard measures of length, weight, capacity, area, and the like, the knowledge of time, interpreting and representing data through graphs and tables, and recognizing patterns and sequencing. Because these competencies 
can always be used and applied by the learners in daily lives. In situated learning, teachers must provide authentic context that reflect the way the knowledge will be used in real life, provide authentic mathematical activities, provide access to expert performances and modeling of process, solutions, and solving problems. They should also provide multiple roles and perspective for the learners and support collaborative construction of knowledge for every one of them. In this case, teacher turns from transmitter to facilitator of learning by tracking progress, assessing products produced by learners, building collaborative learning environments, and encouraging reflection. And learners will be assessed through discussion, reflection, evaluation, and validation in the community's perspective. What are the implications to childhood mathematics education of situated learning? Situated learning involves students in cooperative activities where they are challenged to use their critical thinking and kinesthetic abilities. These activities could be applicable and transferable to students' homes, communities, and workplaces. Another theory that could be related to situated learning is David Kolb's experiential learning theory. As advocated by David Kolb, it is the learning that occurs by making sense of direct everyday experiences. Experiential learning theory defines learning as the process whereby knowledge is created through the transformation of experience. Knowledge results from the combination of grasping and transforming experience. This theory focuses on the use of concrete manipulatives and direct experience in learning. Experiential learning can be used in teaching basic mathematical operations involving money, standard measures of length, weight, capacity, area, and the like, and knowledge of solid and plain figures, wherein they can manipulate things. In this case, teachers must provide meaningful tasks in context which will encourage learners to try various strategies in solving problems. Use appropriate tools such as concrete manipulatives which are really accessible for learners and are countered by them in daily life. The tools should not just be limited to localized materials, but teachers must also let them explore modern tools which can enhance their 21st century skills in solving problems and arriving in solutions. And they should also introduce play and games in learning. This type of learning can elevate students' cognition levels, increase the use of critical thinking skills, and learners can acquire knowledge to concrete, tangible, felt qualities of the world relying to their senses in concrete reality, and results to active participation. Another one is the cooperative learning theory. Cooperative learning is a teaching strategy that encourages students to assist each other in a small group to achieve common goal. Through cooperative learning methods, each student in a group responsible to share opinion and work together to solve the mathematical problem. These topics could be taught using cooperative learning, basic mathematical operations, knowledge and measurement, and teaching through problem solving. In this case, teachers must group learners considering certain factors to have a fair combination of them, and provide a learning space enough for the learners to work together and especially explain the whole process. With that, learners will be able to have the opportunity to collaborate and share ideas with fellow learners as they all together create solutions and solve problems. And teachers can use cooperative learning activities to help students make connections between the concrete and abstract level of instruction through peer interactions in carefully designed activities. No one size fits all. There is no best learning theory that can make our learners competent in grasping mathematics. However, some learning theories might not be effective in teaching mathematics, but can give bountiful learning experiences to other learning contents. Our role as curricularists is to understand each learning theory so that we can design effective lessons that are appropriate for our students' cognitive levels.